Hey everyone. I'm here with my special friend. He's uh, quite camera shy. He never likes to look at the camera. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you about something really important related to healing after elbow surgery. Oh, there he is, Rusty. Hi, bud. Um, and that is having a special companion. I'm sure you can imagine having something or somebody or some pet by you can help with healing. But let's talk about uh, why someone like Rusty helped healing so much more so than friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, you know, humans. Our special friends, and I think it's amazing, uh, and I really value the whole service, animal industry, pet therapy at the hospital, anything related. I valued it prior to being a patient who went through elbow surgery and is subsequently recovering. I valued it uh, prior to because I did work as a nurse at a hospital for 15 years. And there obviously was something called pet therapy where animals, um, mainly dogs, service dogs would come and visit patients in the hospital. And actually a colleague of mine had a service animal dog and she'd bring it to work, I think once a week or once a month, and then she'd bring it around to various units of the hospital and visit with patients. But after having elbow surgery myself and dealing with recovering from that procedure and being home at my house, doing hourly exercises to try to get my elbow moving, it was uh, quite apparent that Rusty would be my special friend. So animals, as we know, you know, they can't talk back. <laughs> They're not judging you. They can't um, say things that are gonna make us upset. And I can tell you, when I broke my arm, friends and family, coworkers, colleagues at um, my nursing organization that I'm a member of, neighbors around the house, People reached out to call me and leave messages and text me and send me emails or come by the house. And it is beautiful to have that outpour of support, but it also becomes exhausting, especially if you're already feeling fatigued after surgery and your body is trying to repair itself, to regenerate uh, the muscles, tissues, the bone itself to actually heal and, and fuse back together. So animals can be even better at times than human beings to help us heal. I'll give you a quick story. Uh, the thing that sticks out to me the most during my recovery. So I was diagnosed with something called complex regional pain syndrome in my elbow uh, that was the surgeon um, kind of had a hint of this because of my increased pain levels and my sensitivity to touch. I could not touch anything to my elbow, especially the tip, and it was numb and tingling. And so for these reasons, he sent me to an interventional pain specialist who did diagnose me with CRPS. I had no idea what that meant. And the day that the surgeon mention the word chronic pain, complex pain, syndrome. You know, my mind, especially as a nurse um, who worked in psychiatric nursing and um, was did interact with the pain, pa pain patient population, my mind started reeling about chronic pain. I was like, heck no. So between the appointment that I had with the surgeon and then the doctor's visit I had with the interventional pain specialist, there was a span of two days. And so my surgeon recommended that I go online and type into the search browser CRPS and start informing myself about what that was and what people did about it. So I did that one afternoon, morning, it was in the morning, and I was sitting outside on my back porch because it was a lovely fall day. Crisp air, bright sunshine, cooler, temperature, cooler temperatures, you know, sitting outside with a blanket, but still getting that 
um, beautiful vitamin D from the sun. And so Rusty and I were out there enjoying Mother Nature and I did what the surgeon recommended. I typed CRPS into Google and I lost it. Now I'm not gonna go into what CRPS is or what that means and all that, can do that in another video, but I lost it. What I was reading, and I read several web pages, I didn't just take information from one, but I kept clicking on new links and new um, articles, new uh, you know information from hospitals and pain specialists, websites, like reading um, actual significant data. I lost it, as I said. I was hysterical. I almost wanted to throw the phone off the porch. It, I started sobbing, like my glasses were literally saturated with um, drops of tears. Um, I had them kind of on my head at times because I couldn't even see. I looked up at the bright blue sky and was screaming and wailing, no, what? And in that very moment, my little Rusty here, my special friend, he felt that energy, sensed my discomfort, and became almost worried himself to the point where he sat up, moved from where he was, walked over to me at my chair, and put his head right on my lap and looked at me like, I'm here for you. I love you. You'll be okay. So, and since then, I mean, the two of us have been tied to the hip. Uh, I, I cannot speak enough of having a pet in your life while you're healing. Uh, he makes me smile on days that I don't feel like it. He gets me out of bed because I have to take him outside to use the restroom. So even those days where I was really in intense physical pain and relying on pain medication to kind of get up and get moving, he got me moving, uh, he makes me laugh, he makes my heart happy, and now I just feel this sense of connection. And then one more quick story about Rusty and the time of healing and how I know we were deeply, and we are deeply connected. I can still feel that now. My dog and I um, went for a walk one week in the summer while I was still waiting for surgery. So it was, you know, summer day. I threw on the sling, they gave me a sling to wear while I was waiting for surgery. I grabbed his leash and we headed down my street for a short walk. No sooner than we get going, we pass one, two, three houses and we're in this corridor of um, just complete trees and vines and um, overgrown, you know, nature, no houses. And I'm walking through this area and I see this flash of white run across and I was like, oh no. My neighbor's dog is loose. Oh dear. And this dog is not nice. This dog is ferocious. And as soon as that thought popped into my mind, the dog was right there on top of my Rusty, attacking Rusty, um, barking at Rusty, biting Rusty, just a nightmare. But here's how I know Rusty and I have that special energetic connection. Rusty stared at me. He looked at me with this face of like, help me, help me, but help me so I know what to do. Help me handle this situation. Because I, I only had one arm. I could not grab this big white dog and, and get it off of my Rusty. So I stared right back at Rusty's eyes. We were locked. And I said, you are okay. You are okay. You're a good boy. Be a good boy. You're good. And in those words and in that feeling and in that connection, he understood me and he literally sat down, which made the dog that was attacking Rusty calm down for a few seconds before the dog's owner came out and the whole thing started again. But when Rusty put his butt down to the ground and sat down and understood that I was telling him he was good, the fighting stopped for 10 seconds. So 
Can't speak highly of it enough, but get yourself a service animal. And if even not technically service animal, get yourself a dog, a fish, a cat, an iguana, a hamster, a snake, a bird, a what, whatever, what have you, that you are going to care for, um, love, and have it give you that healing energy back that you need to receive during this time. So love to hear about your pets. Put pictures, comments, questions below. Check out other videos in the series, all discussing recovering from elbow surgery. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time.